and welcome to the learning curve. Today we'll be integrating this function, integral of ln x with respect to x, ln x being the natural log. To integrate ln x, what we do is that we convert this function to a product. So I'm going to rewrite this as the integral of 1 ln x with respect to x, which is what dx means. So I've rewritten this integral of ln x dx as a product of two terms, which are 1 and ln x. Based on the identity property of mathematics, uh, 1 multiplied by any quantity leaves that quantity unchanged. So 1 ln x, which is really 1 multiplied by ln x, is the same as ln x. So we have not altered the original function at all. But by creating this product, that is by multiplying ln by 1, we're able to make integration, specifically integration by parts, very easy. The next thing that is required after re-expressing the original function here, ln x, as a product, integral uh, 1 ln x, is that we need to assign one of the terms in the product as u and the other as dv. Generally, the term that is harder to integrate is the term that we will assign. So what we're going to do here is that we're going to assign one of the terms in the product as u and the other as dv. And as indicated, the term that is harder to integrate is usually the term that we assign as u. So what we're going to do is that we're going to assign ln, which is the harder term to integrate, as u. And then the term that is the other term we would assign as dv. So again, the logic behind the assignment of ln x as u is because it is the more difficult term to integrate. So we assign it as u, and the other term, 1, which forms the product, we assign it as dv. Our next thing to do is this. dv, I'm going to rewrite here the value of dv, the value that dv is assigned as, which is 1. And I'm going to use this information to find v. So since dv is equal to 1, dv is suggesting that 1 represents the differentiated result of, um, of v, then we will find v by integrating dv, essentially reversing the differentiation. So since dv is equal to 1, we will find v by integrating dv to reverse the differentiation and therefore obtain the original function v. So v is going to be equal to the integral of 1. And the integral of 1 here, with respect to x, of course, the integral of 1 with respect to x is simply going to give us x because we're integrating the constant 1 with respect to x, which means that we simply multiply 1 by x, which is 1x or simply x. So since the integral of 1 gives us x or 1x, then we now have the value of v. v is obtained by finding the integral of dv. That's the first thing to do once you have assigned the terms in the product as v, as dv and u respectively. And the second thing that we're going to do is that we're going to use the term assigned as u, which is ln x. So recall that we assigned u as ln x. We're going to use that to calculate du. Du suggests that we are differentiating u. And we know that the standard derivative for ln x is 1 divided by x or 1 upon x. So now we have all the components that we need to complete the integration by parts. We have dv, we have v found by integrating dv, we have u, and we have du found by differentiating 
LNX, which was assigned as U. Now, therefore, integrating by parts, we're going to get, therefore, we need UV. So, therefore, the integral of 1 LNX with respect to X, which is just the same as saying the integral of LNX with respect to X, is going to be equal to, so and I'm going to write the formula for integration by parts here, which is UV minus the integral of V D U. So this is going to give us, by substitution of the various components that we uh, earlier found, we're going to substitute all of them into this standard formula for integration by parts. So U is going to be ln x here. Substitute U, ln x coming from here. And V is x coming from here. The integral of dV minus the integral of V which again, V is x, du, and du is 1 upon x. So V du would be x multiplied by 1 over x. And of course, we are carrying out this entire integral with respect to x. So now that we have done the substitution, we're going to simplify and integrate x ln x could be re-expressed as, rather, ln x x can be re-expressed as x ln x. The order of multiplication does not matter, but this is a more aesthetic way of re-expressing ln x times x. We re-express it as x ln x minus, so we're simplifying now and then we will integrate, minus the integral of now, this is x multiplied by 1 upon x. So, x will cancel into itself once. once. So, essentially, we would just be left with the integral of 1 with respect to x. So, let us now consolidate this problem by completing the final bit of integration and simplification here. So this becomes x ln x, which remains unchanged, minus the integral of 1 with respect to x. Because we're integrating 1 with respect to x, it will be 1 multiplied by x, which is just x. And because this is a, an indefinite integral, we know that this is an indefinite integral because there are no boundaries. There's no upper and lower limit on the integration sign itself. And once it's an indefinite integral, we have to add the constant of integration. And we can use either k or c to represent the constant of integration. So that this is our final answer. It's x ln x minus x plus k, which we could re-express by simply Factoring out x, since x is common to x ln x and also minus x, we could just uh, re-express this final result as x factored out. When we factor out x here, x divided into x ln x is just going to leave us with ln x. And x into negative x is going to give us negative 1. And then we put that in bracket plus the constant of integration which is k. And this is our final answer. And this is how we integrate ln x. It's a very popular problem in calculus. And this is a very simple and easy way to integrate this function, the natural log of x. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. See you again soon.